This is Tristan with Victorus Games. Welcome back everyone. In the last video, we were able to make an event that moved our player forward. In this video, we're going to add controls using keyboard buttons and gamepad controller. Let's start by modifying our existing event. This event always moves the player forward. I am going to change it so that you have to push the up arrow to move forward. So let's add a condition. If you type in keyboard, you have several options. The one that we are going to use is key pressed and it gives you a list of all the keys that you can select from. So we're going to use the up arrow. So now we have condition up key is pressed. Let's do a quick preview. Our player's not doing anything. I'm going to push the up key now. I'm going to stop. I'm going to push the up key again. Okay, that was super simple, right? Let's add the left and right keys to move the player sideways. I am actually going to just copy. You can use Control-C and Control-V, and I'm going to do it twice. So we basically have three copies of the same event. If you just click on this up, you can actually just quickly change that to left. Same for this one. Right. So now we've got our correct conditions. We do need to update our action. You can either edit it directly here or you can double click on the action to expand it and get some more information. This is the sideways force. I'm just gonna cut the speed we were putting on the Y. I'm gonna do the exact same speed on the X. Remember X is left to right horizontal and Y is up and down vertical. So we keep everything else the same and we'll just edit the right, do the same thing. Although this will be a positive, so I'll just remove the negative one and a zero on the Y. Let's test it. I'm gonna do left right first. This is left. And this is right. It feels really heavy and slow. Now I'm gonna try forward. And we got the movement we want. It's kind of slow, but we're going to work on that and fix that. I thought it would be a good idea to put some arrow indicators on the screen to give the player some instant feedback about what they were pushing. It'll also help us understand if the code is working correctly. So let's add some arrow buttons. I'm going to click Add a New Object. And we're going to use the GDevelop Asset Store. This is an incredible resource that has hundreds of sprites and images for you to use. Eventually there will be sounds and audio and music. These all have permissive license for you to use in your game. When you click on the asset, it'll tell you the license. CC0 means you can use it without any restrictions. Some of these do require you to attribute the artist, so make sure you do that. I'm going to search for arrows. I want to use these white ones. Uh, the reason I want to use white sprites is that I'm going to be tinting them with a color and tinting works best on white. Let's add the up, left, and right. All right, thanks to develop asset store. Let's drag these into our scene. Let's add some events that cause them to change color. We already have a condition, the up arrow key is pressed. Let's just add another action to it. This is the up arrow, so let's change the top arrow button, and we're gonna tint the color. Tinting is basically adding color. So if you already have an existing color, it will blend the existing color with the tint. That's why I chose a white object. Let's pick a color. I'll just use this. And I think what I'll do is I'll copy this action Paste it here, paste it here. We have the change of the tint action, and we have the color. The only thing that needs to change is which object it's applying to. So on the left, I'm going to delete the previous object name and select the left. I'll delete that one, and I'll select the right. So now when we push these buttons, it will tint these arrow buttons. Let's test it. Okay, I'm gonna start with up. Okay, tinted. I released and it stayed tinted. That's because we haven't added any logic to remove the tint. Let's try left, and of course right. Okay, things are good, but we do want them to untint when the button's released. We basically have two options of how we can do this. I'll do them both so you can see how they work. The first way is to check if the buttons are released and to remove the tint. Let's try that. So we can use the key released condition. And we could choose the up. And we'll just copy the tint for the up arrow. And the way you remove tint is you set it to white. I'm gonna copy and paste that. 
and we'll change it to the left and the, the right and then we'll point it to the right objects. Let's test it. Up arrow, released. That's good. Left, right, all of them. Release all of them. Okay, UI element we made works great. I mentioned there was two ways to do it. I'm going to disable these. You can highlight multiple events by using the shift key. Hold shift and click. So all three of these are selected. You can right click and toggle disabled. I use this all the time for testing things. In fact, when I'm making a complex change, I'll usually duplicate the events I'm working on and then disable the good version. That way I can see what the old condition was and I have a real fast rollback if I make a mistake. Okay, so the other way I said that you could do it is very simple. You just remove the tint every frame. So we're just gonna remove the tint. It's gonna remove the tint for, from the three buttons and we're not even using any conditions, so it's just gonna happen every frame. We do wanna move it to the top. First thing it's gonna do is clear the tint and if a button is pushed, it will tint the button and then the next frame it'll clear it again. Let's see if this works. Okay, it's working just like uh, last time. I think I'll also teach you how to use object groups. This is a great way to simplify code so you don't have to repeat it multiple times. See how we had to do three different tint actions, one for each object. Let's put all of these into an object group so we only have to do it once. Under object groups, we're gonna add a group. Click on the group and select the objects you want to be in that group. And we're gonna rename it. So now we have an object group called arrow buttons. We can delete these extra ones. Instead of specifying the actual object, at the bottom is where the object groups are listed. And you actually just treat object groups the same way you treat objects. So anywhere you could put an object, you can put an object group. This will save you a lot of code and on complex games. I'm gonna delete these other conditions. And we're gonna put a note here. So it's gonna clear the tint every frame and only if the button is pushed will it add the tint back. So I like this because it's simple and now you know how to use object groups. Let's see if we can fix the slowness of the controls. They feel very heavy. Now we can try tweaking these impulses on the left, right, and up, but we'd have to do it in multiple places. There's a way we can simplify things, kind of like how we simplified with our object group. We're gonna simplify by using a variable. Let's add a new event. We'll put it at the top. In fact, I'm going to make an event group. And we're going to add our variables here. Let's use the beginning of scene condition. If you type variable, there's actually a, a lot of different types of variables. We're going to be using a scene variable. And there's two types of scene variables. Scene variables that have numbers and scene variables that have text in them. Another word for text is string. We don't want text, we want a number. So we're going to choose this value of a scene variable. We'll give it a name, sideways force. And you can choose to modify an existing variable value, but this is in the beginning of the game, so we're just gonna choose set it to. And we're just gonna start with the same value that we are using already, which is one. So now we have a scene variable called sideways force, and we're gonna put on this left and right key. So what I did, I put this value in the same place where I had put the number one. I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna put it here also on the right key. So wherever the one is, we now have variable sideways force. And I did leave the negative value here so that it still goes left. Let's test it, make sure I didn't break things. Okay, it feels about the same. We want it to be more responsive, so let's maybe five times as much force. Let's see how that feels like. Okay, that could, that could work. All right, let's try that. I also promised you that you could use a game controller. To add game controller support to your game, you need to install an extension. Click Project Manager, Functions, Behaviors, and search for new extensions. Extensions let you do really cool things without having to worry about how it's done in the background. Extensions are one of my favorite things about GDevelop. I spend a lot of time creating these, actually. If you see one that has the word Victorious Games on it, it means I've worked on it. Let's search for the GamePad extension. 
This was created by Boo. Thanks, Boo. If you click on it, click Install in Project. And close. Now we have the GamePad extension. Basically, once an extension is installed, you will see new conditions and actions available to you. So what we want is the player to move forward when the up arrow key is pressed on the keyboard or if the gamepad controller stick is pushed up. So how are we going to do that? We can add another condition. If you type in gamepad, we want to check if the stick is pushed forward. So let's choose this gamepad stick pushed and it lets you choose gamepad one through four. We're just going to choose one for the first gamepad that's plugged in and which stick on the controller. I'm going to choose the left side and we want to find out is it pushed in the upward direction. Okay, so we have our condition here. However, there is a problem. I haven't discussed this yet, but when you have multiple conditions, they both must be true. The logic is an AND logic. The up key on the keyboard is pressed and the left stick of the gamepad is pushed up. So we don't want you to have to push the keyboard and the gamepad at the same time. We want it to be an OR logic. GDevelop lets you do that really easily. Click add condition, type OR. Here it is, OR it has the OR operator icon. Select that. So now you can see I added this, if one of these conditions is true, and it has this area for you to add subconditions, we're just gonna drag our conditions into that. So you can see they're indented just a tiny bit. So this is how you do OR functionality. Up arrow key on the keyboard is pressed, or the left stick of the gamepad is pushed up. I'm going to do the same thing for left and right. I'll just copy the condition and paste it here. We'll change the direction. Okay, now we've got logic that supports keyboard or gamepad. Let me test it with my gamepad. Okay, I'm using the left stick of the gamepad. Left, right, forward. Perfect. We have our movement working great. I hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I am enjoying making them. In the next video, we will make the camera follow the player as it moves up along the ground. To make sure you don't miss it, be sure to subscribe. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Victorious Games. You are also very welcome to come visit us on our Discord server using the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.